Down is my remedy. Yeah, we dealing with no negative energy. We moving as one, that's synergy. And this where I belong, it was meant to be. I just wanna stay here like infinity. Wake up in the morning. Thanks to the Lord, where my joy is. I can feel the love all around me. Look up how we come, it's astounding. And we can't forget the reason. We can only love because of Jesus. Family gather around the tree. It never ends, I don't want to leave. Friends and family, we need family, we need Christmas. It brings us to the holidays.
Well, ho, 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 and Merry Christmas to all y'all out there celebrating Christmas tonight. Thanks for tuning in to Poor House Trivia Online. I got my eggnog tonight, so it is time to get it rolling. I wish everybody good luck. Thanks for tuning in to Poor House Trivia. Hey, if it's your first time tonight, wow, what a night to start playing Poor House Trivia, right? Uh, Christmas Eve. Uh, so it looks like we'll uh, get a handful of folks in here tonight hanging with us. Um, first off, I'd like to thank you all for subscribing to our channel. If you've not done that so far, uh, I would love to invite you to do it. Our goal this year when we were created out of COVID was uh, to get 2,000 subscribers, and we got 2,000. Now I want to hit 2020, 2020 for 2020, and we had 2010, I believe, at the beginning of the game. So uh, let your friends know if they enjoy trivia. It's free. Click the subscribe. You're good to go. Jingle the bell. Click all notifications and rock and roll into 21 with us. All right. All right. Here's how you play Poor House Trivia. Most of you probably know, but if you don't, just in case, don't do anything. Hang out. Have some eggnog. Drink with me. Cheers to you, by the way. I'm going to have a nip. Mmm. Mmm. That eggnog got a bite, too. That is some serious eggnog right there. Um, so you can just make it a drinking game. Scream answers at your screen. Do whatever you want to do. Um, or you can keep track using Poor House Trivia scoring format. And that is using a team captain. You will also sign in with our uh, friend Matt, who is in chat tonight. He has a wrench by his name. Along with Streamlabs. Ian is out. Um celebrating the holidays so he is uh, out tonight and we welcome matt into uh substitute for him so um keep the chat tidy and clean and respectful please and uh if you'd like to sign up using the poor house trivia scoring format just go ahead and do it right there through the google forms and then you'll download your score sheet which looks like that right there at poorhousetrivia.com you right click it save to your computer and then um uh, open it with an Adobe product. Okay. I'm going to take another sip. I like it. Mm. Mm. Who knows by round three, it's, 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 well, cause I don't drink very much and I haven't eaten since about one o'clock. So we're good. Um, so there's four rounds tonight, five questions per round. All right. I'm going to ask the questions. You answer them with your team. You write your answer in the answer slot, and then you click a wager. The wager is how you earn points. One, three, five, seven, or nine are your options. That's it. Nine is very confident. One is no confidence. You're guessing. Uh, you can only use each number once. So once you use your nine, for example, you can't use it again in the same round. That's it. Answer. Click a wager. All good. There's a couple of their bonuses we'll go through as we pass them, but um, that is that. And let's go through the categories. We're going to start off with the curse of Oak Island that was chosen by last night's winners. One of my favorite shows. And I'll give you a very, very, very fun fact. As I do that question, second one's Merry Christmas, right? Reality competition, TV, board games, and U S state nicknames. All right, go ahead and pick your favorite category. There's a plus five. You'll see team captains next to the category name. Go ahead and click it. Pick one of your categories. Click the plus five next to it. Because if you get your chosen category correct, you get a five-point bonus added to your score. That's in addition to all the other points you earn. You get a plus five. Booyah. Give you about 30 seconds to decide on one. And I'm going to turn on my funk channel now. Give me some funk. Let me get a little funk music. Let me get a little funk music. There we go. William Myerson says eggnog is effectively drinking while eating melted vanilla ice cream, at least as far as he can tell. Pretty close, but uh, splash a nice handful of bourbon in there. And that's what I got right here. This isn't just regular old eggnog. This is the spicy kind. All right, everybody, you should have clicked a category at this point, right? You got a plus five clicked and you should be good to go. One of the categories 
uh, will be a year plus five bonus. If you get it right, you get that five. Number one, currenting, currenting airing, currently airing its eighth season on the History Channel. The Curse of Oak Island follows the Lagina brothers and their team as they search for supposedly legendary treasure off the coast of what Canadian province? For you, Wager, name that province. All right, one more time. Currently airing its eighth season on its History, Cha History Channel, uh, the Curse of Oak Island follows the Lagino brothers and their team as they search for supposedly legendary treasure off the coast of what Canadian province? How many of you watch Oak Island? Curious. Let me know in chat if you watch the Curse of Oak Island. All right, y'all, lock it in. We're going to talk about this. The answer we're looking for, the Curse of Oak Island. That takes place on an island. There's supposedly a curse, and there's supposedly some hidden treasure, some serious hidden treasure, right? Like the Ark of the Covenant they mention, uh, like serious big-time treasure. Uh, the answer we're looking for is Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia is your answer. Kristen Dewar, no Christmas music tonight. Denny, yeah, I just played like 15 minutes worth of it. Kristen, during the during the intro, you probably just tuned in. I just literally just changed the channel. I can put it back if you want to hear Christmas music. Uh, let me see. I got it checked as groovy holiday music. Let's do that. All right, Matt's got a chat brag for a for a uh, there you go the capital of Nova Scotia. Ken Kaufman with a win. Here's a fun fact for you. Fun fact: if you watch Nova, if you watch Oak Island, um, there is a metal detector guy on there. His name is Gary Drayton. I had the opportunity earlier uh, a couple of months ago, uh, a few months back, to metal detect with him for three hours. So I had a uh, private session. Uh, with Gary Drayton from the Curse of Oak Island. We, have, we took our metal detectors out. I'm, I'm thinking about getting with a metal detector he uses on Oak Island. And um, so I, I set up a session with him um, for three hours on a beach, and he taught me how to use the, the detector I'm thinking of getting. Um, so I was really excited. He was cool. He was funny. He's a very funny dude. <laughs> we, had, we had a good time. Um, yeah, I chilled out with Gary Drayton on the beaches. Uh, hanging out, metal detecting. We didn't find anything though. Nothing. Pennies. We found pennies, like 12 cents, literally all pennies, <laughs> but it was fun times. That's a fun fact. And, uh, yeah, Gary, if you're watching, love ya. All right. Uh, question two, Merry Christmas for this three part question. Each of your answers can be found using the letters from the phrase, Merry Christmas. You can guess that all three, you need two for your wager, all three for two points. This branch of science is the study of matter and the changes that go with it. Number two, these types of food include potatoes, rice, and bread. <laughs> Beth, no poo-a, uh, poo-a. Uh. That's how he says poo pewter, poo-a. Uh. And number three, Merriam-Webster Describes this noun as behavior exhibiting overwhelming or unmanageable fear or emotional excess. I asked him to say pewter too for me, Beth. <laughs> says, Poo
Remember, you can make these answers using the letters from Merry Christmas. Number one is this branch of science is the study of matter and the changes that go with it. Number two, these types of food include potatoes, rice, and bread. And number three, Merriam-Webster describes this noun as behavior exhibiting overwhelming or unmanageable fear or emotional excess. All right, team captains, go ahead and lock it in. We're going to talk about this answer. You need a two for your wager. If you go to all three, you can click that plus two bonus. Number one, that is chemistry. Chemistry. Number two, starches. And number three is hysteria. There you are, hysteria. All right, question number three. This holiday-themed competition show is currently airing its eighth season on ABC. Each episode features families trying to create elaborate light displays. For your wager, please give me the five-word name of that show. And for a two-pointer, name either one of the show's co-hosts. Merry Christmas. Thanks for the bright spots in a tough year. Loving playing with you every week. Matt's got a chat brag question in the Matt is on point with these chat brag questions. So if you're in chat, Matt will pop in every now and again with chat brags. Right, once again, this holiday-themed competition show is currently airing its eighth season on ABC. Each episode features families trying to create elaborate light displays. For you, Adrian, please give me the five-word name of that show. For a two-pointer, name either one of that show's two co-hosts. You get one guess, and you got 20 seconds to do it. All right, lock your answer in. We're talking TV. It is the Great Christmas Light Fight. Who the thunk? The Great Christmas Light Fight. Uh, and the two-point bonus is Tanya Nayak or Carter Osterhouse. There you go. All right, brings us to question four. Here you go, board game fans. Instead of a space that says jail, the Christmas version of this board game has one that says naughty. For your wager, name that board game. Yeah, bro, Matt was at Spider Kelly's. Fun fact, Spider Kelly's right before COVID, so Spider Kelly's will be starting back up. So I'm going to contact them after the COVID craziness. But we were getting ready to start at some point right at the beginning of COVID, during COVID. Um, so hopefully I'll keep you posted. Spider Kelly's might be starting back up. Let's keep our fingers crossed. If you stop in, tell the managers, hey, start Poirot's Trivia back up. All right, instead of a space that says jail, the Christmas version of this board game has one that says naughty. Be wager, please give me the name of that board game, and you got 20 segundos.
All right, y'all, lock it in. This was our hint of the day. If you're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, if you're on our email newsletter, uh, the answer we're looking for, you got a hint for today. It was Monopoly or Christmasopoly. There you are, Christmasopoly. Final question, round one is geography. The state of Wisconsin is most often referred to by one of two nicknames. And if LP and MT are playing tonight, good luck. Uh, one in reference to its largest college's sports teams, while the other nickname has been found on the state license plate since 1940. For you, Wedge, you can give me the, either of the names or two points for both. I like that chat brag question, Matt. That's a good one. Since I don't know the answers, I'm going to try to pipe in now and again. <laughs> Matt knows how terrible at trivia I actually am, so that's not really a, a threat to you all. <laughs> Once again, the state of Wisconsin is most often referred to by one of two nicknames, one in reference to its largest college's sports teams, while the other nickname has been found on state license plates since 1940. Be wager, please name either one of the two nicknames and for a two points bonus, both. Matt, I'm going to go with Indiana. Illinois, Illinois. That's what I meant to say. I knew it started with an I. All right, y'all. Um, the answer we're looking for for geography, the Wisconsin is the Badger State or America's Dairyland is your answer. America's Dairyland. That brings us to the end of round number one. <laughs> Indiana and Illinois, same thing, yes. I didn't think, I couldn't remember that many states. I remembered Kentucky. I remember on uh, the Monopoly board, I remembered Kentucky. I remembered Indiana. I forgot Illinois. Um, and I say the S, yes, Illinois. But I think those are the only states, right? No, there's uh, Connecticut. There's the light blue ones, Vermont. That's right. Hey, everybody, if you would like to support Poor House Trivia by tossing some virtual coins in, you've, uh, we appreciate your support all year long. We love you very, very much. So thank you so, so much. Uh, speaking of, we've had some, some tippage tonight, and we appreciate that so far tonight. Thank you so much, uh, Jenny. Uh, what is up, Jenny? Tell the folks and the crew over at... Uh... Jenny for keeping us all sane and happy with trivia throughout this crazy year. Happy holidays. Tell the people I said, hey, Jenny, and Merry Christmas back to you. Uh, the Deering family, Merry Christmas. Thanks for the bright spots in a tough year. That's very kind words, dear, from the Deering family. Thank you. Loving playing with you every week. Awesome. And then uh, Paula Bernacki. Thank you, Denny, for keeping us all sane and happy with uh, trivia throughout this crazy year. Happy holidays to you guys. Lots of love, man. Love it. Love y'all so, so much. Make sure I didn't miss anybody. Crooksy, a.k.a. Cassandra, says ho, ho, ho. Thank you, Crooksy. And Lightfoot as well. Thank you all very, very much. Appreciate you. If you want a tip, you can through that uh, poorhousetrivia.online slash tip, or you can name your camera at the QR code right there. All right, we're going to step forward here with question number, I'm sorry, round number two. Here are your categories. Oh, no, 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 no. I'd like to thank yesterday's tippers, first of all. Of course, beer losers, beer winners, Burks for Fool's Gold, Shenanigans, 
Hartman's Hard Tongues. I like to eat sandwiches. K Jam Killer Snails. Jill Chris. LP Magruder 241. Melly 3MT Save the Clock Tower. Tango the Flu Fighters and Theo. Y'all are uh, amazing. We're very, very grateful. Thank you all so, so much. What's up? Yeah, yeah. Thanks for the laughs. You were awesome. Oh, stop it. Stop it now. <laughs> All right, here's your categories for round two. Song duets. Use me as a reference. Name that actress. Biblical hodgepodge. And NFL moments. Pick your favorite. I'm going to sip on my nip. Nelson's Wisconsin, where you can smell the dairy. <laughs> I like that. Thanks for the tip, Half Nelson's. Appreciate you. They say Wisconsin, where you can smell the dairy air. I like it. I like it. Any butt joke, I like me good butt jokes. I always like to say that butt jokes are not my favorite type of humor, but they're a solid number two. Hey, this guy's drinking too much eggnog. Okay. All right, question number two. Question number one. Here we go. One of the most popular versions of the Christmas Carol, little uh, of the Christmas Carol, the Litter Drummer Boy, was recorded during a 1977 TV special featuring an unlikely duet between what two musicians? You can guess it both. Earn your wager if either's correct. Two points for both. All right, once again, in song duets, one of the most popular versions of the Christmas Carol, The Little Drummer Boy, was recorded during a 1977 TV special featuring an unlikely duet between what two musicians? One for your wager, two points for both. <laughs> Ray Simmons, you get chat brags if you got it before the question was read. All right, lock it in. Lock it in. The answer we're looking for, David Bowie and Bing Crosby. Who'd have thunk? David Bowie, Bing Crosby. Question two, use me as a reference. The origins of this type of reference guide date back nearly 2,000 years, but the most famous version was published by the English lexo lexicographer Peter Roger in 1852. Where'd your name that type of guide? Name that guide.
once again, use me as a reference. The origin of this type of reference guide dates back nearly 2,000 years. But the most famous version was published by English lexicographer Peter Roget in 1852. Be a wager. Please name that guide. 20 seconds. All right, y'all, lock it in. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing, Crooksy. I never, I don't think I've ever said that word in my life. Lexicographer. I might be insulted if somebody called me that. You know what I mean? What'd you call me? What? You know what I mean? <laughs> Lexicographer. Roger's thesaurus. Here's a question for you. Chat brags. What's another word for thesaurus? Huh? Uh-huh. What do you think on that one? All right, question number three. Uh, if you whiff at this question, you won't get another chance at it. With that said, for your wager, please give me the name of the British actress who appeared alongside Ryan Gosling in the film action film Drive and alongside Leonardo DiCaprio in The Great Gatsby. Two points bonus. Your answer is married to the lead singer of what English band? Once again, y'all, if you whiff at this question, you won't get another chance at it. That said, for your wager, please give me the name of the British actress who appeared alongside Ryan Gosling in the action film Drive and alongside Leonardo DiCaprio in The Great Gatsby. Two points bonus. Your answer is married to the lead singer of what English band? 18 seconds to lock it in. <laughs> Crooksy, if I fill this glass up a second time, it's going to be a bad second half. I'm already starting to slur words. I'm such a lightweight. It's not even funny. All right, y'all, talk to me. It is actresses we are talking about. The answer is Carrie Mulligan. And the two-point bonus is Mumford and Sons. There you are. There you are. Could be a great second half, depending on how you look at it. <laughs> Thanks for the props on the glass. That's my eggnog glass. All right, y'all, Bible. Speaking of Mumford and Sons, released in 2014 and featuring the lead single, I Will Wait. This album is named for a biblical tower found in the book of Genesis that was built to reach the heavens. Be aware, you please give me the name of that album and the biblical place. It's your boy. Thanks. Thanks. He's out. He's out like a light, like a Christmas light. All right, y'all. Again, in the Bible, speaking of Mumford and Sons, released in 2014, featuring the lead single, I Will Wait. This album is named for a biblical tower found in the book of Genesis. 
that will that was built to reach the heavens. Be aware, you please give me the name of the album and the biblical place. 20 seconds. Let's lock it in when you get a minute. Huh. Okie dokie, let's talk about it. Uh, the Bible, the place, the album, all Babel. Power of Babel. All right, final question, round number one, my friends, is NFL Moments. Using a name that is a play on the title of a particular dogma of the Catholic Church. Look at all those spaces. Regarding Jesus' mother, Mary. This famous football play occurred when the Steelers won the AFC Divisional Playoff game in 1972. I think there was, uh, we copy-pasted this, so it must not have incorporated the spaces correctly. Because there's no way I made that many space in, <laughs> it's possible Merry though. Christmas to the PHT team. <laughs> Um, Franco Harris miraculously caught a pass after it bounced off the head of a Raider. He ran the ball and scored the game-winning touchdown. For your wager, give me the two-word name of this famous NFL play. For two-point bonus, name the Raider whose head the ball bounced off of. I'm going to go into there and clear up those spaces one second. Be back to you in just a moment. Just a moment. It's going to make it prettier. Somehow when we copy-pasted. Once again, using a name that is a play on the title of a particular dogma of the Catholic Church regarding Jesus' mother, Mary. Merry Christmas, PHT. This famous football play occurred when the Steelers won the AFC Divisional Playoff game in, in 1972. Franco Harris miraculously caught a pass after it bounced off the head of a Raider. He ran that ball and scored the touchdown, the game-winning touchdown. We wish you give me the two-word name of that famous play and two-point bonus name, the Raider, whose head it bounced off of. 25 seconds. Just good enough. Love you. Thank you so much for the tip and the contribution and the support all year long. Merry Christmas to the PHT team. Back at you, my friend. Dewar family as well. This is Merry Christmas, PHT. Appreciate you, Kristen. And the Dewar family. Quick Cogwas says he was reading out loud and thought it was the word Usinga. I know, I was trying to I was trying to confuse you. Usinga name. All right, y'all lock it in. Famous play. My favorite team. Uh I do not remember seeing it live. I was only a young boy, very young. One, maybe not even. Seven months. <laughs> um, the answer is called the Immaculate Reception, though. The Immaculate Reception. Uh, and nice work if you got the two-point bonus. That was a bit of a sporty deep cut. Uh, but Jack Tatum, the famous head bounce ball for the win for the Steelers. Uh, and I believe they went on to win uh, the Super Bowl that year. Is that correct, Matt? Did they win the Super Bowl? And would that who have been? Would that have been against who? The Cowboys? The Rams? I can't remember. All right, that's the end of round two, my friends. Go ahead, lock in your scores, and we're gonna go on with the 
puzzle page here. But first, I would like to invite you to hit us up if you want to do a private stream. PoorhouseTrivia.com will put something together for you of any sort. Friends, family, big businesses, corporations, neighborhood, anything you like. Call us. We'll put it together. Very accessible fees. And uh, very uh, we can customize it however you like it. Um, so hit us up. It's fun times. It's a good gift, too. Uh, and fun for ha- holidays, New Year's, etc., etc. So, um, yep. Give us a shout. Um, oh, the Dolphins won that year? Okay. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Your challenge here is identify the following people that were born on Christmas Day. What is up? Anthony Mendiola with the Santa Super Chat, my friend. That's hot, man. That is fire right there, baby. I like it, Anthony. Thank you very much. Anybody know wants to do the Super Chat, there is a dollar sign at the bottom of the YouTube channel. That is also another way to support uh, our efforts here, the team of us. Uh, at Poor House Trivia Online. Thanks, Anthony. What's up, man? Thank you so much. Happy holidays to you, brother. All right, here's your one point a piece images. Identify these people that are all Christmas babies. I'm going to go refill my eggnog. Don't hate. Halfway. Halfway. Ooh, all right. Go ahead and make your final commitments to those answers. Give about 30 seconds to shore them up. And then we'll go over the answers. I'm good. y'all make your final commitments there we're going to go over the answers to these the christmas babies um you get one point a piece here they are jimmy buffett humphrey bogart justin trudeau annie lennox dido uh ricky henderson carl rove rusev or miro sissy spacek and clara barton all right y'all go ahead and input your score into your halftime page on the answer sheet and submit your scores now on in through the google forms we will populate that leaderboard as soon as possible and get it to you we'll post it right there all right in the meantime we are going to start a raffle tonight let's 
Let's see what we got. Let's give away some poorhouse uh, merchandise from the merch store. If you want, if you're interested in per, poorhouse merchandise, you can go to the tip page, and at the top of the tip page is a little thing that says merch. Click that, and you are good to go. We got a lot of cool stuff. We just added two things too. Actually, do I have that? You know what? That's what we'll do. We'll give away. Um, I guess we won't. <laughs> yes, yes, we will. We're going to give away a poor house trivia mouse pad tonight. Poor house trivia mouse pad. There it is. Um, that's one of our latest items in the merch store. So, Little Christmas gift for you there, poor house trivia mouse pad. Let me see. I gotta go to PayPal here. Take care of my business. There we go. Uh, you can type. You can enter the raffle by typing exclamation point raffle into the chat and uh, the number of Merry tickets Christmas that you want to get. PhD who have helped us survive this year. And a Merry Christmas to all our fellow online PhD players. So go ahead and type in exclamation point raffle and the number of tickets you would like to get. Burks Fools Gold. My peoples. Love them. Love me some BFG. <laughs> y'all are very, very kind. Much love to y'all. The whole Burks Fools Gold crew. Thanks for that very kind donation. Really appreciate that. This is Merry Christmas to Denny, Ian, and everyone at PHT who have helped us survive this year. And a Merry Christmas to all our fellow online PHT players. That's a crew full of love right there, baby. Much love to y'all as well. Thank you, Burks Fools Gold. All right, everybody. We're going to go ahead and kick off with round number three. Start with the categories. I am the father. Christmas Carol. Film anniversaries, literary works, and world geography. Go ahead and pick your favorite. I feel like this song is played like seven times. They don't have that many. So now I got to change. I got to change it back to funk now. Let's see if I can find any more holiday stuff. like that Ooh. I like that that's my jam right there Okie dokie, y'all. You got a plus five clicked, and we are ready to start off with I Am the Father. The way it works is this a three-part question. Please tell me what person is referred to by the following fatherly nicknames. You can guess at all three. You'll earn your wager if any two are correct. All three will get you a two-point stocking stuffer. That's right. Here you go. Born in 1856, he is known as the father of psychoanalysis. Born in 1822, he's known as the father of modern genetics. And number three, born in 460 BC, he's known as the father of medicine. You need two fathers for your wager, and three fathers will get you a two point stocking stuffer.
Once again, born in 1856, he's known as the father of psychoanalysis. Number two, born in 1822, he is the father of modern genetics. And born in 460 BC, he's known as the father of modern, I'm sorry, the father of medicine. Click, see if you can get any two of those fathers. All three dads for two points bonus. All right, here is your answer. The dad of psychoanalysis. That's what they should call him. The daddy of psychoanalysis, right? <laughs> uh, wait, no, that's not right. I don't think Mendel is the dad of psychoanalysis. Is that the first one or do I have him backwards? Maybe we have him backwards in the answer. I think Mendel is genetics. Freud is psychoanalysis. And old hypocrites. That's two weeks in a row we've had hypocrites uh, make an appearance in our game. <laughs> Old hypocrites! If you get all three clicked at plus two, you're a boss, and you deserve a stocking stuffer of two points in that one. All right, y'all. Christmas carols. The Peanuts Gang sings what Christmas carol at the close of a Charlie Brown's Christmas? Classic, classic carol. Once again, the Peanuts gang sings what Christmas carol at the close of a Charlie Brown's Christmas. 20 seconds to do your thing, chicken wing with a bling bling. And a sing sing. Hippos galore, old hypocrites. All right, lock it in. Let's talk about it. Charlie Brown's Christmas classic carol there. Um, now Carol Burnett, Christmas Carol. Carol Burnett's also a classic carol. But we're talking about Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Glory to the newborn king. All right? There you go. What's up, everybody? Look down right there. We got a plus. We got not a plus two. We have a 20 person, 20 team leaderboard. Let's talk about how it looks. Um... Uh, we have, make sure I have it right here. Uh, did that change? Let me see here one second. I think we... All right, looks like on mine we have George's Boys, Smarty Pants at 71, just good enough at 72. Flu Fighters at 73. With Slime Puppies, Hippie Honeys, Hippies and Honeys. We have Neil's Boring at 74. Merry Christmas. Can you sing us your favorite Christmas carol? We have As God is My Witness, I Thought Cheese Balls. Uh, that goes, what does that say? Let me take a look, see if I can see what that says. Could Fly. Uh, Why Not Zoidberg. Uh, 74, DC Swampers. Crushed Optimism, 75. The Pain Train, We Come From Behind, 75. We got rock out with your nog out. I like it. That's what I'm talking about right there. Rock out with your nog out. <laughs> 77. Dazed and confused half Nelsons. Uh, 78 is Bailey's Buddies. 79 is Southbound. We have a tie for first at We Are Number Two and Risky Quizness. Uh, condoms prevent minivans. Thank y'all so much. Merry Christmas. Can you sing us your favorite Christmas carol? Um... I'll tell you what, I've been working on the 12 days of 20 miss. So I have six of them. I'll finish it by the end of the year, but six businesses closing, five Q-tips up my nose, 
four kids at home, three murder hornets, two Zoom invites, and a vaccine for my COVID-19. There you go. <laughs> I'm finishing it. You heard it there first. That's the first six. A vaccine for my COVID-19. I need a big finish though. COVID-19. Boom. That's what a glass and a half of eggnog will get you right there, fellas and ladies. <laughs> All right, let's move on to question number three. All right, because we came here for trivia. But uh, there you go. That's the first six in the 12 days of 20 miss, right? Five Q-tips up my nose, three murder hornets. Celebrating its 40th anniversary this year, what was the first feature film to be based on a Saturday Night Live sketch? Two points bonus, who directed that film? Thank you, Paige. I'll tell you what, Paige, by the time your party comes up, now nah, uh, we will have all 12 finished. We'll do the whole 12 that night. Once again, celebrating its 40th anniversary this year, what was the first feature film to be based on a Saturday Night Live sketch? Two points bonus, who directed the film? It's Chris Beaver. Can you sing for him, PLS? Probably about 15 seconds. All right, the answer. Celebrating its 40th anniversary this year. Any fans of this film? It's called The Blues Brothers, y'all. Two-point bonus for the director was John Landis. Condoms for Many Mans, thank you again for the tip. Oh, appreciate it. It's Chris's birthday. Can you sing for him, please? Um, What do we do now? I wish we could sing like real music, but I can't because we get copyright strikes for music we can't reproduce music on here um yes you know what here's cheers to you chris this is a chorus from a song called a toast here goes here's to you my dear friends to all will be and all that we've ever been and here's to the world and god above to those who've ever been hurt and those who've never seen love and here's to you and to everyone a toast and my love. Happy birthday, Chris. But a bang, baby. 21 today, Chris. <laughs> All right, there you go. Lucy Montgomery penned this 1908 novel, which tells the story of a female orphan adopted by an elderly couple from Prince Edward Island. Be wager, please give me the colorful title of this novel. Adam, you got it, buddy. Happy birthday, Chris. <laughs> Adam's not 21 today. Or Chris isn't 21 today, I mean. <laughs> Once again, literature. Lucy Montgomery penned this 1908 novel, which tells the story of a female orphan adopted by an elderly couple from Prince Edward Island. Two point, or sorry, for your wager, please give me the colorful title of that novel.
All right. Here we go. We're talking literature. Uh, the answer we're looking for is Anne of Green Gables. Anne of Green Gables. There you are. Nice work. Final question. For nearly 300 years, this South American nation was governed as a colony often known as Dutch Guiana. Even since gaining its independence in 1975, it still recognizes Dutch as its official language. Be wager, please give me the name of the country. For a two-point stocking stuffer, give me the name of this country's capital city. <laughs> Is Ian trolling us? Is that what's going on, Ray and Rick Hardo? <laughs> Ian's out there trolling us. Oh, Grinch. Somebody's a Grinch out there. You're a mean one. All right, y'all. Once again, for nearly 300 years, this South American nation was governed as a colony often known as Dutch Guiana. Even since gaining its independence in 1975, it still recognizes Dutch as its official language. Be wager. Give me the name of this country. And for a two-point bonus, give me the name of the country's capital city. Twenty-one seconds. All right, y'all, lock it in. Geography. Um, answer we're looking for is Suriname. Surname. That's my surname right there. Two point bonus. Paramaribo. 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 There you go. I want a natty bow. What? What'd you say? Somebody say Natty Bo? I don't know. Somebody's trying to drink in here tonight. We're turning this poor lace up in the club tonight. Hey, y'all. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern. We do it. Off the top of my head, Matt, I would say what is the main export of Suriname? I have no idea what the answer is, but if I'm going to guess, I'm going to guess. I'm going to guess bananas. I'm going to go bananas on Suriname. If anybody wants to challenge me on Suriname's number one export, I'm taking all challenges. I'm sticking with bananas. All right, my friends, we're going to go ahead and start this 642 question. We're going to take a break from wagering. You do not wager on this question. This is a 642 question on your answer sheet. There you'll see it. You earn points based on when you answer. There's a six point clue that is difficult. Four is medium, two is easy. And you can only guess once, though. If you six, go for six, and with it, you can't guess again, unfortunately. It's up to you when you want to gamble. I got a couple coffees. Anybody on my team with bananas? Got a lot of coffees on export for Suriname. And <laughs> Matt says, if we're only counting legal exports, he's going with coffee. <laughs> All right. Six point clue. You have 30 seconds. I'm a film series with the announcement of an upcoming sixth film on Disney Plus. This series will see the return of its original main star for the first time since 1992. If you want to go for it there. There you go. That's a good one. Six point clue. There you go. I'm going to look up Suriname's export.
Well, uh, Suriname's exports, number one is gold. Two is precious metal scraps. Number three, get this, is called rough wood. Rough wood. There you go. If you want some rough wood, call Suriname. Four is petroleum. And five, who thunk? Who to thunk? It's bananas. Call them. <laughs> it's bananas. All right. Four point clue is coming at you. Uh, this franchise has grossed close to $500, $500 million at the box office, but the last three films have been released straight to video including the 2012 film subtitled The Holiday Heist. What do you do? Well, I export rough wood. All right, lock in your four-point clue. All right, that is four-point clue going once, going twizzle, three-piece gone, two-point clue coming in. In the upcoming film, Macaulay Culkin will reprise his role as Kevin McAllister. All right, y'all, we're going to lock this in. All right, the answer we're looking for is called Home Alone. There you are. 2.6. Who got on the six? Let me know. Chat brags are open. Six point close. Hey, what's up, NREAP0823? Lots of love to you. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. It's Merry Christmas Eve. You got a Merry Christmas back at ya. All right, round four categories, my friends. Historic events, fictional characters, Major League Baseball Hall of Famers. Give me a beer. And triple 50-50 TV shows. All right, y'all, go ahead and lock that category in for that plus five piece. All right, y'all, here we go, round four categories, kicking it off with historic events. Even though it took a few months to receive the news, the War of 1812 officially ended on December 24, 1814, with the signing of this treaty by the United States and Britain. For your wager, give me the name of that treaty. If you're a stocking stuffer, in what European country was the treaty signed? All right, even though it took a few months to receive the news, the War of 1812 officially ended on December 24, 1814, with the signing of this treaty by the U.S. and Britain. For your wager, please give me the name of that treaty. 
for a two-point bonus. In what European country was the treaty signed? All right, y'all, talking history. Here we go. First question, round four. Nice work. If you sniped it, it is called the Treaty of Ghent. The Treaty of Ghent. Two-point bonus is Belgium. Belgium for the stocking stuffer. Put the stockings on those fellas. That's what I'm talking about right there. We need to bring that back. That's what I'm talking about. Show off some calves. You know what I mean? Question two characters, illustrator Robert May created what Christmas character for a promotional coloring book distributed at Montgomery Ward department store? Once again, illustrator Robert May created what Christmas character for a promotional coloring book distributed at Montgomery Ward? Department stores. I'm on a move. I'm going up. I'm a man on a mission with no misses and I'm looking for love. Oh, I'm just looking for love. It's got to be against the law to look this damn good. Because baby, I feel real good and I wish I would. All right, your answer in these characters lock in that character. It is known as. Rudolph, the red-nosed reindeer. Here's a question for you, Chad Braggs. First to get it wins. What was Rudolph's um, elf friend name? The first elf friend he meets for the, the misfits. The They did the misfits duet together. The blonde-haired elf. What's his name in that show right there on screen? Um, looks like we have an update. The Belgium, uh, we're also going to accept Netherlands for the bonus for round one. If you put Belgium or Netherlands uh, for round one bonus, you will get uh, credit. So give yourself credit for Belgium or Netherlands. All right. Question two, Major League Baseball. Matt Frost got it first. It is Hermie. Hermie is his name. Doing so in the 1930s. Thirties. What Hall of Famer was the first person to win a World Series in each of his first four seasons in the majors? Two point bonus. What is your answer's middle name? Again, doing so in the 1930s, what Hall of Famer was the first uh, person to win a World Series in each of his four seasons, first four seasons, in the majors? Two-point bonus, what is the answer's middle name?
All right, here is your answer in Major League Baseball. It is Joe DiMaggio. Two points. Bonus is Paul. Uh, look, yes, Clarice, Rudolph's girlfriend's Clarice. Yep. Here's one for you then. There is the Island of Misfit Toys, right? So here's two parts. A two-part chat brag. Merry Christmas. We have the blank in the box, which is not a Jack in the box. What's his real name? And then we have a dolly for who? A blank in the box, what's his name? And a dolly for who? Those are the misfit toys. Those are the two of the misfit toys on the island of misfit toys. Got to get both of them. All right, here is question number four. What short-lived brand of beer introduced during the 1970s was named for the younger brother of the sitting U.S. president? It's all for you. Bottoms up. I got a wrap presents tonight, too. It's going to be a nasty looking gift wrap. Once again, what short-lived brand of beer introduced during the 1970s was named for the younger brother of the sitting U.S. president? Zachary Lida, it is Charlie in the box. Remember, he was all upset because he's not a Jack in the box. He's a Charlie in the box. <laughs> Poor guy. Uh, but how about a dolly? The dolly's name. Well, it was a dolly. She was called a dolly four. In the name. Um, all right. Here you go. This beer. Right. Here you go. Anybody ever had this beer? Let me know. I'd be interested in knowing if how it tastes. It's called Billy Beer. Billy Beer. Um, there you are. Final question is in TV. It's a three-parter answer. Yes or no? That's your answer. Yes or no? If the following TV shows are rescheduled to receive a reboot, are they rebooting or are we just full of it? Uh, LA Law, is that rebooting? Remember LA Law? Is that rebooting or are we just joshing you? Uh, Hill Street Blues, classic. And Doogie Hauser MD. Are they rebooting? Yes or no? Uh, the dolly was called a dolly for Sue. A dolly for Sue. Jen, thanks for the tip. Merry Christmas back to ya. Thank you so much for your support. All right, the answer we're looking for. No, we're not yes. Yeah, not yet. Ellie Law, Hill Street Blues, Doogie Hauser, MD. Are they rebooting or not? Right here is your answer. L.A. Law. Is that rebooting? Yes. What? You heard it here first. Hill Street Blues. No. This is the one I'm curious about. Is Doogie coming back? Yes, he is. Woo. There's some good news. Finally, some good news in 2020. Doogie Hauser is coming back. Thank you very much. You heard it right here first. Poor house trivia online. <laughs>
All right, y'all, give yourself two points if you got all three. Yes, no, yes. Submit those final scores or semifinal scores, and we will give you a final question tonight to see who wins this puppy. Not this puppy, but this puppy. <laughs> this puppy ain't even turned towards us. You know what I mean? He's just giving... Jinx, at least you could turn around. You know what I mean? That's quite disrespectful. All right, y'all go ahead and submit your scores to us. We will populate the leaderboard and see how it goes. All right. There is only one other Poor House Trivia mouse pad owner in the universe. That's it. There's only one other existing Poor house trivia, mouse pad owner in the universe. Uh, and they won last week. The second poor house trivia, mouse pad winner, owner in the universe is Zachary Lida. There you are, sir. What's up, Zachary? You are the proud new owner of a poor house trivia, mouse pad, man. Merry Christmas to you, sir. Um, go ahead and click that link, Zachary. You'll, uh, it'll take you through the process. Give your address. You'll have to log in and whatnot to redeem your mouse pad. But congratulations, man. Let me know in chat, Zachary, if you could, that you know you won. And uh, I'll click the click the complete here on the on the thingamajiggy I got. The thingamajiggy. The hoot nanny. Zachary says, yes, he knows. Awesome, man. Congratulations. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Best little poor house in Texas. Saxwalem. I like that. <laughs> we totally need to get another game in Texas. We had a few over the years. Um, now, where were they? Was that it? Was it in near Austin or was it near Dallas? I can't remember. Actually, you know what? We do have a poor house game at. Um, it's called Pepper Smash Brewery, currently in Texas on on Tuesdays. They host it internally, and they do our uh, question set. So if you're in Texas, Pepper Smash, uh, Pepper Smash, it's called. Um, so, yeah, we do. And that, I, I can't remember if that's in Dallas or Austin. Matt can probably tell you. Uh, Pepper Smash. Tuesday night's best little poor house in Texas. I like it, sex while I'm. <laughs> yes. Yes, we had games in Dallas Fort Worth hosted by Austin, but now we currently have Pepper Smash, and I can't remember where Pepper Smash is. But that is currently on Tuesday nights in Texas. While we're waiting on the scores to come in, I got a question for you all. And this is a real question. This is a real thing that happened to me today. No kidding you. This happened. I was When it happened, I was like, I got to get advice. I called my mom um, and I was going to ask you all. So here, here's what happened. I opened my front door this morning and there's four Amazon boxes stacked on each other, right? Uh, which I ordered. I ordered a bunch of stuff for my, my daughter and whatnot and my parents and stuff like that. So I pull them in and I'm going through them to kind of figure out, sort them out so I can wrap them. And I get through to the third box and I rip it open and I open it and it's biological material with test tubes and, and the little pipettes. They did, they, the kid that they, they, they squirt biological stuff in the pipettes. And I'm like, did somebody order my kid a science kit? Um, did somebody order my daughter like a, like a, like a home science lab or something? And I'm looking, this is like some real high tech stuff here. And I'm like, then I, then I, then I look at it and apparently I, <laughs> it was misshipped to me like biological stuff, pipettes and test tubes and some kind of, some kind of juju. <laughs> so. I don't know. I guess I tried to call the place it was addressed to today to let them know. 
But uh, but yeah, man, I don't, I don't even know. I guess I'm gonna have to deliver it. Like Hannah say, here, here's your, here's your biological stuff. Um, do I need a test or anything? Do I need a shot? Like I don't know. <laughs> Did I just get COVID? <laughs> yeah, Rick Carter, it's a home colonoscopy kit. Somebody ordered that for me. I could see that. <laughs> But yeah, it's wild, man. I, I got it over the sitting over there. I was thinking about regifting it. What do you think? <laughs> That'd be the classic regift. <laughs> yeah, that's what I always needed, Denny. You know, a set of test tubes and some uh, some pipettes, and you know. <laughs> they mess that kind of stuff up in my neighborhood all the time. It's pretty unbelievable, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, no, it's actually, it's actually, um, some sort of veterinary veterinary hospital was the addressee. <laughs> it was a veterinary hospital was the addressee. So, um, yeah, I got to call them up and, you know, maybe it's some sort of, maybe I just give drinks a distemper shot or whatever. <laughs> Anyways, here's your top 20 going into the final HAS family team. Tyler's at 134 with no idea. We Come From Behind is at 136. That log had a child at 136. Neil's Boring, 140. See, pain, the Pain Train at 141. Hippies and Honeys, 140. I'm sorry, Hippies and Honeys, 142. Fabulous Killjoys are tied at 143 with DC Swampers. Uh, five Golden Tokes. 146 is Risky Quizness and Thurman Merman. Crushed Optimism, 147, with Half Nelson's at 148, a G-I-M-W. I thought cheese balls could fly at 148. Fifth place is Slime Puppies at 150. Rock Out with your Nog Out, 152. Third place is 153, Dazed and Confused. Tied for first is We Are Number Two and Southbound at 155. Your final category, should you choose... Do accept it. All I want for Christmas is you. No What's up, LP? Uh, I shouted out earlier. Oh, yes. Yeah, says uh, Christmas. Merry Christmas, Denny. Thanks for the Wisconsin shout out. We embrace our derriere. Absolutely. Slavic says thank you for doing it on Christmas. She said that's what she said. <laughs> Thanks, LP and Slavic. Appreciate you. All right, y'all, go ahead and lock in your wager zero to 12. If you get it, you earn it. If you miss it, you lose it. I'm going to take a minute. You know what? I had a had a, uh, a slick tiebreaker last night. We didn't use it, so I'm going to reuse it. I got to pull it up here real quick. All right, take one more second. I'm going to um, input this tiebreaker real quick. this final question it is coming at you mt a lot of wisconsin up in here tonight what is up y'all thanks for the fun this christmas eve you got it love from wisconsin love back at you final question my friends here you go for the 2011 album under the mistletoe mariah carey's holiday song all i want for christmas is you was turned into a duet with what Canadian singer? Read it one more time. For the 2011 album Under the Mistletoe, 
Mariah Carey's holiday song, All I Want for Christmas is You, was turned into a duet with what Canadian singer? Local Electric is at 141. Got it. Once again, for the 2011 album Under the Mistletoe, Mariah Carey's holiday song, All I Want for Christmas is You, was turned into a duet with what Canadian singer? 30 seconds. Lock that thing in, y'all. We got about 10 seconds to lock it. All right, we're going to do it. All I want for Christmas is you. Under the mistletoe, Mariah Carey's song, All I Want for Christmas. Turned into a duet with a Canadian singer. That Canadian singer's name is... Justin Bieber is your answer. Justin Bieber. There you go. All right, y'all. Nice work. If you got that correct, go ahead. Send on in your scores. We'll pop up the leaderboard. See who wins our Christmas Eve game. <laughs> Send them on in. Thanks so much for playing tonight, y'all. If you're taking off now, lots of love to you. Thank you so much for playing tonight. If you celebrate Christmas, have a merry, merry Christmas tomorrow. Uh, wish you and your family the best. If you do not celebrate Christmas, whatever you celebrate or do not celebrate, I wish you a happy holiday season. Definitely a wonderful new year. Um, I can't wait till next week. Get this 2020 business out of the way. <laughs> We're going to finish up our uh, 20 days of 20 miss. Again, we have, um, if you got any ideas for any other things that my true love gave to me in 20 miss. So here it is again, starting with the sixth day, going backwards. On the sixth day of 20 miss, my true love gave to me six businesses closing, five Q-tips up my nose, four kids at home, three murder hornets, two Zoom invites, and a vaccine for my COVID-19. <laughs> we need six more, y'all. See if you can hit me up with uh, any good ideas. I don't know if y'all have had a COVID test. I had one uh, a month or two ago. Um, just to check in. It is not fun. I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, if you need it, you should get it, recommend it. But I'm not going to, I'm going to warn you. It's not the, poo it's like, it, it's like it's, they ram it. You know, if you've had it, you know what I'm talking about. It's real deal. I mean, it's not excruciating, but it's like, it's, 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 it's real weird and uncomfortable. <laughs> Who else has had one? You know what I'm talking about. What's up, Yap Yap? Happy holidays, PHT crew. You got it. <laughs> Five golden tokes from Beth Casarola. We need seven. My favorite so far is the murder hornets. Three murder hornets. I might make that the five, but it doesn't ring well. Five murder hornets. You know what I mean? 
Gotta have a stringing out of the vowels there. <laughs> All right, everybody. We have got ourselves a leaderboard. Let's see how it plays out tonight. Um, here it is. All right, your top 20 tonight, y'all. Congratulations. Top 20 looks like this. Just good enough. E walking on sunshine. No idea. Neil's boring the pain train. We come from behind. Hippies and honey is fabulous. Killjoys. DC Swampers. Five golden tokes. We got risky quizness in the top 10 uh, with crushed optimism. Half Nelson's a GIMW. I thought cheese balls could fly. Slime puppies, rock out with your nog out. Dazed and confused, and a tie for first, a three way tie between Southbound, Bailey's Buddies, and we are number two. Here is your question. You have 30 seconds. Please submit your answers. I checked in with Ian, Scott, and Matt, and myself, of course, on this question. Uh, for the tiebreaker, it looks like this How many presents are under trees? At this moment, it's Scott's plus Ian's plus Denny's plus Matt's house. This is on Christmas Eve. We took inventory. To okay, Beth, I got it. Toke is pronounced twak. Got it. Five, five golden twaks. Got it. All right, tiebreaker again between we're number two, Bailey's Buddies, and Southbound. Go ahead and submit your answers. How many presents are under the trees at the homes of Scott, Ian, Denny, and Matt? The sum of all of them. Right now, as a check-in, Christmas Eve. Closest to it, wins. Oh, I see. Is Twok a Star Trek thing? Got it. All right, y'all need your answers. Please go ahead and submit them in chat. We are number two, Bailey's Buddies and Southbound. That's fair. Seven road trips canceled. Wrath of Khan. All right. I got it. I got it. I got it. All right. We need all answers in, please. We are number two and southbound. The sum of the presents under the trees at the respectful ha respective houses. Scotty and Denny and Matt. Remember, this is Christmas Eve. We and re. <laughs> Yeah, the that's the and reap six inch swab up my nose. That was um the the five five Q tips up my nose. <laughs> All right, uh, Bailey's buddies say forty two. Southbound says fifty three. We're number two says eighteen. The answer is twenty. 20 total presents under the respective trees of our four houses. I know, four households, and we got to 20. <laughs> Remember, tomorrow's Christmas, so we'll see how it is there. So tonight's winners goes to We Are Number Two. You are the champions tonight. Good job on that double. Yeah, Merry Christmas. We Are Number Two. Go ahead and uh, let us know in chat uh, what your category will be for next week. And we can, over the uh, weekend here, study up on some stuff that you give us. All right? 
So we will wait just a moment for we're number two to give us a category. In the meantime, if you have not subscribed to our channel, if you know somebody who has and you think they might recommend them, hit them, tell them to hit us up. Uh, it's very easy. Click the subscribe button on the YouTube channel. Totally free. Never a charge, period. Uh, and then there's a bell. You'll hit that and click all for notifications on. And then you will never miss anything that we do here at Poor House Trivia Online. Uh, looks like we are number two. Uh, chose the presidency presidency of FDR. All right, so that's what we can all study up on Tuesday, 7 p.m. next Tuesday, uh, or this coming Tuesday. Um, that would be, what, the 28th? Let me check and see. Uh, 29th. So Tuesday the 29th is our next game, 7 p.m. Eastern, courtesy of We Are Number Two. They have chosen the presidency of FDR. All right? Um, man, I appreciate y'all tuning in on Christmas Eve. Um, once again, happy holidays to everyone. If you celebrate Christmas, I wish you a very Merry Christmas to you and your family. Thank you all a ton for your, for your continued support. We really appreciate it. Uh, we love what we do here, and we're going to continue to do it. All right, so have a wonderful rest of your evening. Lots of love. Merry Christmas. Take care. We'll see you Tuesday, 29th. Be well. Bye-bye. Oh, and thanks to Matt. We haven't seen Matt in a minute. Matt, love you. Miss you. We uh, wish you a Merry Christmas. Thanks for subbing in for Ian here, and we'll see you all soon. All right, take care, y'all. Bye. Matt also asked, will there be a game on New Year's Eve? Yes, there will be a game on New Year's Eve. There will be a game Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday next week, 7 p.m. New Year's Eve is on. I'm going to finish this eggnog. Bye. Sometimes you just wait for happy news.